Raven and the Sources of Light by Donna Rosenberg Long ago when the world was young, the earth and all living creatures were shrouded in the darkness of an eternal night, for neither the sun nor the moon shone in the sky. It was said that a great chief who lived at the headwaters of the Nass River was keeping all this light for himself, but no one was certain for the light was so carefully hidden that no one had ever actually seen it. The chief knew that his people were suffering, but he was a selfish man and did not care. Raven was sad for his people, for he knew that without the sun the earth would not bring forth the food the Haida needed to survive, and without the moon his people could not see to catch fish at night. Raven decided to rescue the light. He knew that the way from the Queen Charlotte Islands to the source of the Nass River was very long, so he collected a group of pebbles. As he flew, whenever he became tired, he dropped a pebble into the sea. It immediately formed an island where Raven could alight on solid land and rest for a while. When Raven arrived at the chief's village, he said to himself, I must find a way to live in the chief's house and capture the light. Raven thought and thought. Finally, he exclaimed, I know just the way. I will change myself into something very small and wait in the stream to be caught. So Raven transformed himself into a seed and floated on the surface of the nearby stream. When the chief's daughter came to draw water, Raven was ready. No matter how she tried to drink some of the water, the seed was always in her way. Finally, she tired of trying to remove it, and she drank it along with the water. The woman became pregnant, and in time she gave birth to a son, who was Raven in disguise. The chief loved his grandson, and whatever the child wanted, his grandfather gave him. As the boy crawled, he noticed many bags hanging on the walls of the lodge. One by one he pointed to them, and one by one his grandfather gave them to him. Finally, his grandfather gave him the bag that was filled with stars. The child rolled the bag around on the floor of the lodge, then suddenly let go of it. The bag immediately rose to the ceiling, drifted through the smoke hole, and flew up into the heavens. There it burst open, spilling the stars into the sky. As the days passed, the boy still wanted to play with toys. He pointed to this bag in that box stored here and there in Grandfather's lodge. His grandfather gave him whatever he chose. Finally, the child cried, May! May! His grandfather took down a bag containing the moon and gave it to his grandson as a toy. The boy chuckled with delight as he rolled it around and around upon the floor of the lodge. Suddenly, he let go of that bag just as he had let go of the bag of stars. The bag immediately rose to the ceiling, drifted through the smoke hole, and flew up into the heavens. There it burst open, spilling the moon into the sky. The boy continued to play with bag after bag and box after box until one day he pointed to the last box left in the lodge. His grandfather took him upon his lap and said, When I open this box, I am giving you the last and dearest of my possessions, the sun. Please take care of it. Then the chief closed the smoke hole and picked up the large wooden box he had kept hidden among other boxes in the shadows of one corner of the lodge. Inside the large box, a second wooden box nestled in the wrappings of a spider's web, and inside that box, a third wooden box nestled. The chief opened box after box until he came to the eighth and smallest of the wooden boxes. As soon as the chief removed the sun from this box, his lodging was flooded with a brilliant light. The child laughed with delight as his grandfather gave him the fiery ball to play with. He rolled the sun around the floor of the lodge until he tired of the game and pushed it aside. His grandfather then replaced the sun in its box and replaced the box inside the other seven boxes.
Day after day, Raven and his grandfather repeated this process. Raven would point to the sun's box, play with it until he tired of it, and then watch as his grandfather put the fiery ball away into its series of boxes. Finally, the day came when the chief was not as careful as usual. He forgot to close the smoke hole, and he no longer watched Raven play with the fiery ball. The child resumed his raven shape, grasped the ball of light in his claws, and flew up through the smoke hole into the sky, traveling in the direction of the river. When he spied people fishing in the dark, he alighted on a tree and said to them, If you will give me some fish, I will give you some light. At first they did not believe him. They knew that the light was well hidden, and that Raven was often a lazy trickster. However, when Raven raised his wing and showed enough light for them to fish with ease, they gave him part of their catch. Day after day they repeated this procedure until Raven tired of eating fish. Finally he lifted his wing, grabbed the sun with both claws, and tossed it high into the sky. Now my people will have light both day and night, he exclaimed, and from that day until this, the sun, moon, and stars have remained in the sky.